California volcano threat, Coso volcanic field monitored after 600 earthquakes a day. Well, I would venture to say that there's a lot more than, than 600 earthquakes a day. I mean, it's more like um, 1,600 earthquakes a day. But all right, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, we're coming up to here. The Volcano Peak Volcano is just about uh, 20 or 30 miles uh, north of Ridgecrest, where we've had the 6.4 and the 7.1 magnitude quakes. The 7.1 may, may being a major quake. And we've had various geologists and even Dr. Michio Kaku explaining to us that uh, the San Andreas, of course, that whole area is a very volatile, dangerous area that has had droughts of earthquakes and that a big one in San Andreas is uh, imminent and uh, the quakes in the coastal volcanic field that we see here uh, which is a moderate threat volcano it's not moderate anymore I would say but uh, it's just south of Long Valley Caldera which is a high threat volcano and that erupted within the last 1000 years as you can see here we even saw that Clear Lake near the geysers the video that I put up a little while ago has had an earthquake swarm of 21 earthquakes that has a geothermal plant there as well. But anyway, uh, you see the pristine volcanoes there in this volcano field, in the Coso uh, volcanic field. Pristine volcanoes uh, with the lava flows, la lush, lavish lava flows, which happen to direct towards Ridgecrest. And we, the 1,600, okay, the, my map shows that it's gone up from 1,650 that we had a few hours ago. It's up now to 1,829. So you see that it's increasing. It's not good. I mean, I don't know of any air area. I mean, I'm not a geologist, but has there ever been any area that has had thousands of quakes a day? I mean, this is like over 10,000 in the past week. Uh, we have had a USGS update having to do with the uh, activity and the cost of volcanic field they did say they would be monitoring they would be monitoring it for any eruption because they did mention the word eruption yes uh, after all it's a volcanic field something is going on there as far as some people I guess feel that the magma is somehow uh, rumbling under there but uh, the cost of volcanic field one of the most seismically active regions in the United States, especially lately. They're monitoring it closely uh, by USGS, of course, because of the reported over 600 tremors daily because of the massive earthquakes that recently rocked Ridgecrest, California on Friday, July 5th, and also July 4th, Thursday. And now that from what they were, uh, the USGS did tell us, they were two different faults. The July 4th 6.4 magnitude was a one fault and the July 5th 7.1 magnitude was a different fault perpendicular to the day before, which means that it has really put the geologists in a state of frenzy because they have to figure out what these two faults are doing and try to assess what kind of earthquakes they'll be giving in the future as separate faults and even as combined a combined fault area. So you can understand that uh, this is something that is very unusual for them, but uh, it's uh, a crisscrossing of faults in this area is uh, normal. Uh, it's not like the San Andreas area, which has parallel faults to each other, like the Hayward Fault and the San Andreas Fault. This one is the, I guess you could say the bigger example of this is the Garlic Fault which goes perpendicular, horizontal, basically to San Andreas, which runs northwest, southeast, and is locked around uh, just north of the Los Angeles area, locked, zip locked together, uh, but uh, it seems that something is going on and it's unlocking towards the eastern part of the Garlic Fault. Anyway, last week's 7.1 earthquake triggered fires there. The water mains broke, the gas lines broke 
and fires did start out. The highways, uh, part of the highway 178, uh, subsided, buckled in. Uh, it was also as if you had pieces of dominoes pushing uh, one piece or, uh, off the other. And, you know, uh, damaged buildings causing uh, few injuries despite the eight times more force than it had from the day before, the quake from the day before. A statement given by California Volcano Observatory, Calvo, says that seismic activity that started Friday in the southern margin of the Coso volcanic field in the Inyo County was continuing at about 600 quakes a day. As we said, there's not 600, there's a lot more. I guess if you count them over two and a half uh, magnitude, they're over 600, but you know, there's a lot more. I would say a thousand more every day. A magnitude of one magnitude or more. These have been triggered by the magnitude 5.4 earthquake at uh, 9.19 p.m. local time, roughly 13 miles east-southeast of Little Lake. And uh, it was an aftershock. The 5.4 magnitude was the aftershock of the uh, major powerful earthquake, July 5th of 7.1. Their statement said, the intensity of the activity at the COSO at COSO, meaning the COSO volcanic field, is gradually declining. I don't know how they say that. <laughs> okay, maybe it's wishful thinking. Okay, but okay, they're the, they're the geologists, the specialists. Maybe they see that it's declining. And they go on to say, of the approximately 1,600 earthquakes detected at one magnitude or above since July 8, only 12 have been magnitude 3 or above, with the largest two earthquakes registering 4.1 magnitude. And they say the current activity at COSO can be considered distant aftershocks or triggered earthquakes. The magnitude 1.7.1 uh, July 5th occurred on a northwest trending fault oriented towards the COSO area and it is common for large earthquakes to cause aftershocks beyond the actual fault rupture. Well of course it's normal to have aftershocks after that they say they go on to say the ground deformation this is cal uh, um, california volcano observatory no ground deformation indicative of volcanic activity has been detected and there is no imminent threat of an eruption the california volcano observatory will continue to monitor the situation for any sign of volcanic activity and provide updates as warranted end quote so you can see that now they, uh, because it took them over two days to actually use, uh, to actually tell us that these earthquakes were in a volcanic field, first of all, and then uh, use the word eruption. It took them uh, two days. Um, so yeah, okay, they're monitoring this for any sign of deformation and volcanic activity. The cost of volcanic field on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountains at the northern end of Mojave Desert. It's about 40 miles north of Ridgecrest and this field covers about 150 square miles uh, mainly in the Naval Air Weapon Station, the naval base which is found at China Lake. Now if you uh, go to the map, some maps, you'll find that the terrain is blocked out over the na naval base which is normal. They, they don't want you to know the terrain. They don't want you to know what's in, in there. It's blocked out. Uh, so you have no idea what's there. You know? But when you go to Google Earth, you can see, uh, you can see the, the terrain. You can see the volcanoes in there. And uh, I guess it's best if you have Google Earth to go and see that. Now, this area of the coastal volcanic field it was uh, marked by USGS as a when they came out with their, with their high threat volcano count for California, uh, one of them being, of course, uh, Long Valley Caldera, the other one being Clear Lake, they uh, had uh, registered cost of volcanic field as being moderate. Uh, now this new map that comes out has it as mod moderate to very high threat volcanoes. Is the cost of volcanic field 
UBB craters where the uh, earthquakes seem to be pointing north to, uh, which are, of course, just south of the Mono uh, Long Valley volcano area. And um, you also have Clear Lake volcano, which is moderate to very high threat, which we had the 21 little uh, earthquakes, uh, the earthquake swarm that I, uh, you could see in my previous, one of my previous videos. That's at the geysers, which has the biggest uh, geothermal plant in the world. And uh, Lassen Peak volcano is also considered moderate to very high threat. Also Mount Shasta and Medicine Lake volcano. Also Mount Hood, of course, Mount, uh, which is uh, Oregon. And of course, uh, Mount St. Helens. But anyway, uh, this is concerning now California. And um, another USGS report that was published last year uh, told us about California's exposure to volcanic hazards. And they warned the potential for damaging earthquakes, landslides, floods, tsunamis, and wildfires is widely recognized in California. The same cannot be said for volcanic eruptions, even though they occur in the state about as frequently as the largest earthquakes uh, on the San Andreas Fault, end quote. And their report classified Coastal Volcanic Field, along with Mount Shasta, Medicine Lake, Volcano, Lassen, Volcano Center, Clear Lake, Volcano Field, Long Valley Volcanic Region, which is a super, Long Valley, which is a super volcano, UBB craters, and Sultan Buttes as being located in a land, in a land in a volcanic zone. Now, almost 200,000 people live, work, or go through one of these regions on a daily basis, and the report that was published last year by the USGS from the University of California and University of Rhode Island suggest the Long Valley Caldera as a reservoir, a semi-molten magma measuring 240 cubic miles. So that is huge, as you can understand. Um, and this is based, basically, it's not, uh, this uh, coastal volcanic field is not far from um, the Long Valley Caldera, as we know. The 20-mile, uh, uh, sorry, I'm looking into the 20-mile uh, long valley caldera, long valley caldera, Eastern California, one of the world's largest volcanic calderas. This supervolcano is about 10 miles in width and up to 3,000 feet deep. And very few people know about this as a supervolcano east of the central Sierra Nevada range making it a potentially greater threat than Yellowstone Volcano. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.